Welcome to this video where this will be the final outcome. I've just given it a few retouches and it is almost done. I have to admit it's not one of the most favourite things I've ever painted but I do look forward to seeing what you guys do with it. And the full story of this tutorial is that Diane saw this on my wall, on my studio wall and wondered if it was part of the five fold fun <laughs> challenges and I thought oh why not add it in so yeah that's um how this came up so I did my construction and painting all on one piece of paper watercolor piece of paper you can transfer it and then paint it elsewhere however you wish anyway enjoy so measuring and marking my horizontal and its center my radius I'm going to set to 11 and a half so that I know that my compass can go bigger than that and it fits nicely on A3 paper. And if you've done this construction before, then you can skip ahead because the chapters are in the caption. So marking above and below from this and this intersection. I'm going to have to change my compass a little. So that I can find the vertical. So as long as it's more than halfway, it'll make the mark you need it to. And you've just got to make sure these two intersections cross each other. So full line there and just on the right hand side one dash. I'm just going to put across besides these four so I don't accidentally use them. And now I'm going to open up my compass to this distance. The compass point will go there but I'm going to put it here as well so that my um, compass pencil, compass pencil, so my lead can feel it and I can see it as well. Okay, so measure here, mark over here and then I'll put my compass point here for the same technique so measure here but mark on the left and on the right and now full of trepidation I'm going to step it round I have to say, I never prepare these, so what comes out and what happens is exactly the reality of it, the hits and the misses. Oh, that's not bad one. It's a teeny tiny bit over, but I'm going to leave it be. And what I'm going to do is, because it's slightly big, so this line, imagine it's got thickness, I'm always just going to do the whole, just slightly to the, the shorter side of it. I'm going to step it around from the bottom with that in mind. And I'm pretty sure it will then land on itself if I kind of, I'm just slightly piercing it below the mark. Let's see. Oh, slightly over now. <laughs> That's so funny. Okay, so that is fine for me. I'm now going to put in my 10 divisions. And making sure it goes through the center is really important. And if I can feel it go through those piercings, then that is good as well. Some dodginess here. <laughs> but I've said this before, but tenfold kind of is very self-correcting. And I'll try and show you that. Okay, so now in one of my thick fine liner pens, 0.8, I'm going to put in the final pentagon. And this is so that I can paint on top of it. And you're connecting one to the one that's one away on the circumference. Try to ignore the horizontal line, which is a, an extra division, a 20 division rather than a 10 division. 
we need the other one as well so i'll do that in i'm going to do everything in a thin pen now so 0.3 Now the next set, set of circles we're going to draw, they're not absolutely vital, necessary for the construction, but they give you a nice visual as to what you'll be doing. So I'm going to do this in pencil. So this and this intersection, so where the pentagons hit each other, one connecting to the one that's three away, so zero, one, two, three, you can find that ten times here. But I'm going to mark it here and then I'm going to do a lot of hovering and checking because this circle at the center is going to be the same radius in five corners. So this will contain a rosette as will these part circles. And then in between, a single petal will be sitting so it gives you an idea of the structure of what you're drawing quite helpful now we need to work on connecting each of these midpoints of these triangles these triangles to the one that's three away um, and do this very carefully I'm going to use 0.3 again. So this one, skip and skip and connect to this. And where it's in the corner of my pentagon, I'm going to extend it. And where it's the side of the pentagon, I'm going to stop it. And notice what else it's doing. It's hitting the central circle. And when you draw all of them, eventually you'll end up with a dodecagon. But I'm not going to pay super, super close attention to it because... I know my circles might be a bit dodgy, so this is what I mean about self-correcting. So when I put the line in, if it misses, rather than force it, I'm going to let these lines override my circles, because these lines are based on lines before the circle. I hope that makes sense. So you can check that it's going through, but these are going to be more accurate so satisfying so I did draw those circles but these points now that I've got are there or thereabouts and they give that precision so we've got a central dodecagon around the edges we don't have the full dodecagon but we will get those lines a little later okay I need 20 divisions at the center so I'm going to go back to pencil and can you see these 10 triangles that have come to fruition from what I've just drawn? If you take the tip of one, line up to the centre, you can see it will line up with another. So I'm going to gently put in these lines. I only need four of them because one of these 20 divisions is already there. It was the horizontal we drew. So I'm going to put it at the centre. That was a very satisfying fall into the central point. Nicey nice. Oh, again. Oh. Okay, so the central part is divided into 20. I'm now going to put in my proportioning line. So 90 degrees plus one intersection. And I'm going to put the line or ruler in position and just mark it on the points I need. So one intersection in from there and one intersection in from there and this is something that is a rule that applies to this rosette and also applies to 12 fold eight fold and so on and so forth and i'm going to draw it at the center and then whatever i need in the five corners so this circle that we're drawing is so super important because this is the one that will allow us to draw the petals of the rosette and basically the whole pattern, apart from fiddly things in the corners and sides. And it's often those fiddly things that I think people neglect. Lines that we're drawing, you could do them in pencil and then pick out what you need, but I'm gonna go for it and draw it in pen. 
let's see how that works out there's going to be a pair of parallel lines that are going to run from the tip through or either side of the central side to the opposite side so one going like this one going like this like this like this and like this so a pair of lines every time and they will go through the points on these two circles and this pair of circles so one two there two there two there and then it will just go through these two points but it's quite a shallow intersection so it's not one I would suggest we use for this and on the side of the pentagon where it's a tip so the tip of the pentagon you can go all the way to the edge of that and when you hit the side of the straight line stop so don't go into the star and then start at the next line and then go to the second intersection in okay and then on this side i'm going to go second intersection in and then here i'm going to go all the way to the bottom well actually not to the bottom i'm going to leave a gap Ooh, remember i remembered so all the way to the edge to the line a gap and then past the circle the proportioning circle and stop on the second section then i picked up the pen from here past this intersection the second circle and this one i stopped short of the line and if you're not sure of this gap um imagine a petal sitting here and it's not touching the side so uh, you can stop that quite short and you can fix it afterwards so let me do the other side keeping everything parallel okay so that visual of seeing it vertically is really useful for my brain so i'm going to now keep rotating the paper and keep drawing it and these loose ends will start coming together Um, in the big scheme of things you can't really see but I overshot on the last line now I want to kind of highlight things here so can you see this five-pointed star officially called a pentagram okay this star occurs in all rosette patterns so whether it's 12 fold 16 fold 8 fold is sitting there in between if I grab my pencil so this is just kind of for fun <laughs> i'm going to connect one tip to the one that's opposite it in terms of the inner tip and find its center so i found its center and i'm gently going to open up my compass so if i find that center of that star and draw the circle that touches every single tip apart from my dodgy drawing can you see that this star is perfectly contained within the circle. Can you also see that these tips have the same angle at each point? Each length is the same. So therefore it's a perfect regular pentagram and it sits between these circles. So that little shortcut we take is to ensure that our five pointed stars, our pentagrams, that sit in between our rosettes are perfectly proportioned. And the only time that they are entirely perfect is for tenfold symmetry. So that's why tenfold symmetry is so beautiful to so many people because of this quality. Because when you draw it with a twelve fold, although the tips will all be sitting on that circle, they won't be perfect. They'll be the best they can be in that situation. So it's a really beautiful quality and once you pay attention to it you really enjoy it now mine aren't too irregular but i'm not going to draw that circle again i just wanted to highlight it okay so the central rosette is drawn and these spare rosettes 
which are in between the circles are all drawn but the main area now of drama is this because you've got three petals here and if we kind of draw this one we can see it's sitting there comfortably but I don't have any idea uh, what's going to happen here so although I left that line loose it was an estimate okay so what we need to do is draw a couple of things the first thing is draw a small circle that just has its corner on the pentagram pentagon and it's just going to touch let me open it up so you can see it's just going to touch that tip so that will be this central star and you can get the same measurement here in fact it might be a good one to measure here because there's so many of them yeah but not necessary completely so we're going to put this in in each corner of the pentagon so notice my circles have always been going to the very edge of my outer circle and this is where it really comes into full use I need to draw in a decagon and I'm going to do that in pencil next So now that we have this extra division outside, this will enable us to help draw this line. So let's start drawing what we need. So from this point to this point is done. We're going to go from this point to this point, but extend into the circle. And doing so, we complete this kite shape and also this, what is it, a fifth of a star is also completed. To complete this line and know what kind of angle it sits on, we need this intersection. So line up your ruler from the inner circle outside your pentagon to this point and then extend inwards. So that's it. And it should be parallel to this existing line. So you can kind of do a visual check as well. Let me complete the other side. So firstly, inner circle to the middle circle extending inwards and then to get this angle you're going to go from the inner circle to the mid circle line up carefully check your parallelness as well oh that's a really lovely satisfying check and then complete okay all right let me do all of them And so there we have it. We've completed the two rogue petals on the edge of our pentagon thanks to a really easy and clever trick that I learnt from Alan Adams at the summer school in 2019. So um, these ones have had always been the tricky thing to complete and I feel this method is so satisfying and very easy to do. All right, now time to add colour. So with gouache, gouache um, it's an opaque paint and what I have done is I've done one layer and I've kept it quite opaque at the centre and I'll try to make it a little bit more transparent around the edges just mixing up how I've painted the three colours I've mostly used. The central one is a little bit different. Um, I think with gouache you do have to kind of wait for it to dry to see whether it's transparent and then add another layer and um, if you're familiar with your paints then you sometimes can just judge it straight away on the first call but these are new to me so I wasn't that sure how they'd dry so I had to let them dry then relayer them and then redistribute some of the pigment and so on so um enjoyed it not sure I love it love it love it 
but um, anyway it is one of those things I always have to complete a painting and then hopefully the next one will be even more delightful Hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and um, hope you enjoy your painting and drawing as well. Alright, bye.